You know, it's it's interesting because, um, you know, I asked you, do you got, you know, if you if you if you are a kid growing up and you're playing ball, um, just in the park, you know, one day you you want to become Jordan, you want to mm. become LeBron, you want to become Kobe, you have somebody who you look up to, mm-hmm. and I asked you who was that guy for you, and you said Carlos Halfcock. I think mm-hmm. that's his name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and early in the conversation, you mentioned patience, mm-hmm. and you know, I had never heard of Carlos mm-hmm. prior to to our conversation, and and once you mentioned his name, I just went, I just wanted to learn about this guy. Uh-huh. I, I don't know if this is hype or not. But I, I saw a, 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 a documentary on this guy, and they said that he would move something like so, twelve yeah, inches yeah. an hour, mm-hmm. like like mm-hmm. literally twelve inches per hour to get his target. Mm-hmm. Even even the animals yeah. that were around him didn't, didn't realize yeah. that there was literally a sniper there mm-hmm. because he was so patient and so methodical mm-hmm. with his movements. That ain't me. But I mean, I mean <laughs> sniper school, you have to be stalking. It was the most patient I've ever been, but it's also the biggest internal fight that I've had to have with myself was forcing yourself to be that patient. You can't move fast. You have to, you know, uh, sometimes you just move when the wind blows really good. Uh, yeah, being that patient, it I, it's not for everybody. It's not, it's the, the worst part of the job is, Doing that and sitting and waiting, the worst part of the job, and which happens to be and makes up most of the job. Mm-hmm. It's the boring part. 90% of being a sniper is absolutely just, just boring. You're fighting boredom and your own mind 90% of the time. The other time, 10%, 5% after that, you're taking pictures and relaying messages. The 5% remaining is you're pulling the, pulling the trigger and taking a life. And that so hold comes on, rare. you 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 actually would take pictures yourself? Yeah. Really? Do you're trained to? I've never my line of work. I've never had to take any pictures of mm-hmm. anything. I with the reconnaissance teams, I've watched them take photos, but I'm not a camera guy. Mm-hmm. Um, can be, but it just the line of work that I was doing at that time. It just wasn't. That's more of a traditional way of sniping. Of take out a notepad and you can three dimensionally draw the target you're looking at with the distances and X, Y, and Z, there is a part of the job. You learn it in sniper school and you have to be able to pass it. Um, Calling in airstrikes, calling in mortar strikes, helicopters, uh, that's all a part of the job, but it makes up so little of it. Um, Observation is probably like the biggest one. And observation is also like where you could take pictures, but I'm observing with my eyes, taking that mental a uh, snapshot and relaying the the, the information back. Mm-hmm. And that mental snapshot could be, you could hold that picture in your mind for a week and it's called KIMS, Keep in Memory System. So you train up on this throughout sniper school, they'll give you or hide, you know, three or four objects or 10 objects in a field along a route that you're running. And when you get back either that day or later on down the line in the class or in in the school, They'll say, hey, what were the five objects that you saw or 10 objects that you saw going on that run? I need the color description and dimensions of them. And you will go back and recall the items to, to a T. And it's just, yeah, you keep a memory system. They give you things to mentally take pictures of and come back, draw it out. And yeah. OK, so so you're home. You've been home for how long now? Uh, 13, 14 years now? Oh my god. You gosh. been back a civilian? Um officially 2011 when I left Iraq for okay, contract. So about 12 yeah. years. 12 years. 12 13 years. Uh-huh. Question for you. That that whole It don't feel like that. I'm sure it don't. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. That whole memory thing you just spoke about paying attention to everything and being able to hours later come back and remember colors, uh, dimensions, shapes. Do you still find yourself surveilling everywhere you're at? Especially driving. Driving mainly. Driving. Driving is the, and yeah, driving. Okay, what do you mean by? Just driving down the road, Uh always observing, always looking out for stuff. 
Um, anything, anything. I'm just a, a paranoid driver. Paranoid driver. I've been in, yeah. I think from, I used to drive strikers, a 40 ton vehicle to mm -hmm. the streets of Mosul, Iraq and being on the constant, under the constant threat of IEDs and yeah, mainly IEDs. You're always on the lookout, always on the lookout. So more paranoid driver than anything else. And I've been in a couple of accidents with a striker as well that I didn't like, and I don't want to experience again, accidents, car accidents, but I've never like used my skill as far as a sniper in the civilian world, other than like driving. Um, oh, take that back. I left the door unlocked one time. At your house? At my house. And when I went to go put the key in to un open the door, it had already opened up. I had turned it. Mm -hmm. No one had been in, but I did remember, okay, well, are the shoes in the right place the way I left them? Is anything out of, I remember stuff like that. Like if anything's out of place, if a shoe is out of place or, yeah, a curtain is drawn back the wrong way. I'm like, I didn't do that. That wasn't the way it was, you know. We take more mental images than we think we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Our brain just chooses to, disregard it because if we kept all of it we'd drive ourselves insane yeah yeah but yeah. being able to go back and recall certain things yeah i think that it's like the big takeaway and how i can i guess i see myself applying it today